worked on Thomas the Tank Engine, you yep. you made the Fat Controller. Yep. And which of the trains did you make? Did you make any of the trains as well? All of the faces. Oh my uh. God. Um, all of the faces. For the foot now, we're talking first series only. Sure. I left after the first series, um, and rightly so. Uh, well, I, I like <laughs> to think that we set that we, that, that the creative dis we made the creative decisions because yeah. after that it was just a repetition of the thing. Yeah. But I I I made all the faces for the first series. I made all the little characters, um, the fat controller and and the uh, the guard and the the the. Um, the porters and the people on the stations. And uh, and I also designed the smoke generator, which uh, <gasps> which was... Um, what? Well, you see, well, how long have you got? All the time, <laughs> all the time in the world for well, this. Look, look, I need to know was, which one of your favourite train was as well. Um, that's interesting. Um, <laughs> I think... I actually think... I actually think my favourite train was Henry. Ah, oh, oh. yeah. Good choice. Um, yeah. And in fact, I've still got one of the original faces of Henry oh, somewhere wow. in the house. I've, I've lost it for about a decade, but one <laughs> of these days I'll find it again. Um, and actually, Henry was wrong because the um, I met the Reverend Audrey at, at, a, at a party after we finished the first series. <laughs> and he stood there and he said, oh, of course, you've made Henry wrong. <laughs> Henry was a 462 and you've made him a 460. <laughs> <laughs> um, wow. So what was the, were you being quite detailed with the real trains and all that kind of stuff? Well, let me, okay, I will tell you what happened. Go um, on. We, we we copied the book, the little, you know, the little books, the original little yeah. books. Sure. We yeah. copied the designs from the little books and we, t we turned them into practical, uh, practical engines that would run on a gauge one track, which is available everywhere because there is, it, it's the largest, uh, well, I think it's, yeah, it's the largest uh, commercially available gauge that you can get model railways in. So we built them to, and we built Thomas and Gordon to shoot a pilot episode. Uh, so we built them from scratch. We bought a whole <laughs> load of um, of the track. We and we shot a pilot episode. Now, the smoke machine in the engines for the pipe, and they're all made out of perspex and brass and steel. And the smoke machine for the um, for the uh, uh, the pilot engines was a car cigarette lighter, twelve volt car cigarette lighter, running off a contact that was on the rails and we would drip smoke oil onto it and smoke would lazily puff out of the of the the chimneys now Amazing. but it was generating so much heat that the body started to buckle <laughs> at the point where it was the point where it was in the engine body so so when it came and and actually we'd we'd made all the wheels from scratch turned them up on lathes done everything like that and the, the trouble is we had so much bother with the two engines that we'd scratch built on the pilot episode, that what we did was we threw them away. And for the actual series, we bought a German make of engine called Marklin. We bought dozens of these things and we cut them up and we reconfigured them, the chassis to match the actual, um, the, the 462, the, the, the 060, right, right. The, the, all, of, all of the configurations that the, the book engines have got. And, and the value there was, of course, that all the R&D had been done by the, by, by the, by the original developers. The, of, right, and, okay. But what we didn't have was a smoke generator. So what I did was um, I found this um, liquid called titanium tetrachloride, which smokes on contact with air. So I got these little glass containers blown at Imperial College, funnily enough, glass <laughs> chemical engineering department, um, which had an inlet, a tube, little tube inlet that went into a, a glass, um, little glass container, which was about the size of a PP3 battery, and then an outlet, which came directly out of the top, filled them up with titanium tetrachloride, and then attached the, uh, attached the inlet to a small aquarium diaphragm, which was then driven off the wheels on the engine. 
uh, which had a, a, a little concentric, a little eccentric bearing. Uh, so the, the, the diaphragm, the diaphragm pump from the aquarium was pumping air through the titanium tetrachloride, which was then bubbling out and that little tube came out of the chimney pot. So when the engine was going along, it was actually puffing this smoke. Out. Oh wow, that's some uh, genius! What a renaissance no, man you are. That's insane. No, no heat, no heat generated at all. I mean, and the wow. only thing we had to bother with was the crew saying, "Is it toxic?" <laughs> oh my god! And it probably was. Yeah. Actually, it was an irritant, but it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> and yet, yeah, that is that is something that you've you know that design is is imprinted on the, the DNA of an entire generation yeah. masses of generations. you know my son my, uh, my son's mum made a giant thomas face to put on the end of his bed and turn his bed into yeah. a yeah. and stuff. Yeah. as someone yeah. who's uh, my my girlfriend's nephew is obsessed with the new cartoon version of thomas and i can tell you that the theme tune to that show is a torture that no other <laughs> human being could invent well you're not not um they're two they're four they're six they're eight yeah, oh my god when you hear that on a loop all day because the episodes are about 30 seconds long so um, it's all it's all intro and outro of course the original we, um the original uh music which is which da, is da, wonderful da, 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 da. um that was done by uh junior campbell and his um his uh advertising team um oh. from the marmalade do you, do you know the band the marmalade back in the 60s no oh yeah, oh, yeah much yeah. junior campbell he, he once he packed up being a musician, he he formed a music company for servicing adverts and and uh, and, and just commercials. And, That's and they did the music for for Tommy the Tank, and I loved that original yeah, music. Yeah, I thought it was that whole good. series. Well, I was there thinking um, I was going to just be able to tell you at the end that I've been listening to you since I was seventeen, nearly twenty years. But actually you've been part of my childhood before Queen, because I grew yeah. up on Thomas, so there you wow. go. Yeah, we all did. We all did. It's we true. have a, a feature on our podcast, which is Seven Degrees of Rye, which is uh, tenuous links that anyone would have to something <laughs> yeah. Queen-related. I've got one for, for Thomas. Can I, can I share my Seven Degrees oh, yeah. of Rye? Yeah, yeah. So, as a child growing up in Hertfordshire, as we've touched on in previous podcasts, um, lived next door to a lovely family called the Cooks. Um, they had a son who was a similar age to me, so we became good friends, knew the family really well. Um, this young lad's mum, uh, Margaret, was, you know, taught me how to swim because she was a great swimming teacher, so I learned that. And Margaret, our next door neighbour, was Reverend Audrey's niece. Wow. Ah. Ah, is mine. What, a, of what a small world. Uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, the, the very last thing I'll touch on is the fact that I suspect you might have made the Heart of Gold as well, which is one of the greatest spaceships in and history. No, I did, unfortunately, you didn't. Um, but I did ma help. We, we, we did make the Vogon captain's costume. Ah, oh, OK. Cool, cool, cool. Were you part um, of Beeble Brocks and all that kind of stuff as well? Uh, well yeah, we didn't make Beeble Brocks, but, but the Vogon captain, who, who was fond of... Um, uh, um, quoting Vogon poetry which was the worst oh mixture. yes um, yeah. <laughs> that was we, we used to get basically um where I used to work uh this is weird you know because when I first started doing model making and special effects I, I was working in a workshop was around the that was around the back of the Vesta Rowing Club in Putney, which is where we played so many years ago in 1984. Of course, yeah. But, ah. but uh, we used to get overflow work from the Beeb. We, we were right. primarily commercials, and, we, and that's where I did Roger's Alien. But we also, got, we did, um, we built the giant robot for Doctor Who. Um, we built, uh, which was the, um, which was John Pertwee days. Uh, and we built the Vogon Captain for Hitchhiker's Guide, um, and God knows what else. We, we but we did used to get a lot of a lot of overflow work from from the B when that when they when their own in-house team couldn't cope. 
I have had the great honour of working with Sandra Dickinson and um, and Simon Jones and stuff. So yeah, it was, it's a series that is very close to my heart. Yeah. I mean, I think we're now getting to a, a level where we have quite confidently moved away from Queen of Thailand. <laughs> <laughs> a whole new, whole new podcast, but it's been so lovely spending this afternoon with you. Terrific.